Hey everyone, this is Helena Hart and I'm here with Adrian Everhart today. Hi. Hi, Adrian. Thank you so much for talking with me again. Last week, Adrian and I recorded a video called How to Reignite a Man's Attraction, Even If He's Pulled Away, and it just got such a great response. I wanted to invite Adrian back on today, and today we're going to be talking about the ABCs of getting him back, meaning your absolute best chances of getting a man back. And Adrienne is just a total expert on this topic. She has a whole program around this. And I'm just so excited to be talking with Adrienne about this today. Specifically in this video, we're going to be talking about what to do when you just can't ignore the fact that you still love a man. So welcome Adrienne and thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Helena. Thank you so much for that warm welcome. I'm so excited to share with everyone as much as I possibly can about the process of getting your man back. And a lot of times people think it's just about getting your ex back and it's not. This could be even when your husband needs a break, you might have a pending divorce or you might be in separation, or this might be a situation where your man has said, I love you, you're amazing, I gotta walk away. Maybe it ended in a big fight. But either way, the result is the same. This is about getting the absolute best chances to get him back in your life. And when you still love a man, it's so hard to let him go. So I'm so happy to talk about that today. I am so excited too. So let's just jump right in. So let's say, you know, I was a woman who came to you and just like you said, my man said he was confused and he needs to take some time away to figure out what he wants, or maybe he just flat out broke up with me and I'm totally in despair, feeling heartbroken. What's the first thing you would tell me or have me do? Yes. And so often, you know, we, we've all been there in one way or another. We get our heart shattered by a man that we really, really love. And in that moment of the breakup where he's walking away, your impulses are going to begin to fire like crazy. You're going to want to call him, text him, email him, drive past his house. And you're going to want to convince that man all the reasons why you and him are so perfect together and why you should be together. I actually almost made a man a PowerPoint presentation with lots of images of us so I could prove to him how great our lives fit together. So as strong as that impulse is to act on that and as right as it feels, it's actually not what you want to do. So you want to take a different approach, which is a much softer approach. A lot of people talk about no contact and how do you utilize no contact in this? And I'm not a fan of a rigid no contact, but I do believe there's a certain amount of time that needs to go by where you just let your man sit with his decision. He's made a decision. You have to let him feel like a man, be the man, and live with that decision, live with the silence instead of having you, you know, around him calling, texting, dropping by his house, things like that. That is such great advice. And I just have a million questions for you. This is actually not my specialty at all. So I'm so thrilled to have someone who's an expert in this topic, just, you know, sharing everything, you know, what would you advise for a woman to say specifically to a man who says something like that, you know, he doesn't know what he wants or, you know, when he breaks up with her. So before that, you know, no contact period, what would you Now I know every situation is different, but what are maybe some examples of something a woman could say before taking her own space herself? Yeah, that own, your own space is actually what is going to lead you back to him. And I go deeper into that. I, and just the most important thing you can say to him at that moment, which is usually when your knees are hitting the floor hard and you're really feeling the impact of how deeply and dramatically your life is going to change. So in that very, very dark moment, composure is not on our side in most cases. And most women watching this video, this has happened after the fact. But if it's I was just going to say that, yeah, I probably, if they've come to you, this has already happened, but just in case they maybe feel like this is impending or something, I just want to include that. 
for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Because you, it, when you are ready to talk to him, and when he does come back around, even if you've texted him a million times, even if he's blocked you on social media, you know, blocked your email, things like this, even though that's happened, one of the best things that you can say to him early on is, I feel really sad, hurt, whatever it is. I feel really sad about us ending things, yet I trust you know what's best. Because at the end of the day, this is really about, do I trust this man? Do I trust that he really knows what he needs right now? Now, a lot of you might say, no, I don't. I don't trust him. <laughs> he doesn't know what he's doing. He's cuckoo right now. And, um, but at the same time, he's got to figure it out. So no matter how much you convince him that his way of thinking is incorrect, and you may have so much amazing proof, you know, you may have, you know, three beautiful children that you share with this man. You may have wonderful memories with him. You may have the best sex life and you may have a business together. It may be all sorts of wonderful, amazing things, but no matter how much you try to convince him that you are right for him, you're going to be pushing that energy onto him, that masculine energy of doing, convincing, making something happen, and it is going to repel him. So one of the best things you can say is, you know, here's what I feel. I feel sad. I feel so, you know, exhausted. I, I feel so, I just want to cry my eyes out. Yet I trust you know what's best for us, or I trust you know what's best for you. And just leave it at that. I love that. Yeah. I always talk about how when you jump into convincing mode, that's actually masculine, almost competitive behavior. And it automatically forces a man into the resistor role or the distancer role when you, when you do that. So that is fantastic. And just out of curiosity, how long, I know you mentioned no contact. And just for those um, people watching who aren't really familiar with that, what is that briefly and, and how long would you suggest a woman go without actually reaching out and, and contacting the man? I, first of all, I love what you said, that resistor mode. Um, I call it digging your heels in. Uh, I sometimes call it taking a cat for a walk on a leash. I don't mm -hmm. know if anybody's ever done those things, but they're pretty impossible uh, to do. And so that's the type of resistance you'll be met and you will not be favored you will create more resistance, more distance by doing these things. So um, I'm sorry, what was your question? <laughs> well, you were talking about no contact. So, oh, yeah. and, and I know that you're not a fan of like complete no contact. This is where Adrian really, you know, is set apart from pretty much every other expert out there who just kind of wants to play games or talks about like manipulative tactics and something where Adrian and I are so aligned is we are all about being authentic and real and not playing games because as you know, uh, those games will never get you those permanent lasting results. They might get you a short term result. Man might come back for a little while, but once he gets the sense, um, you know, that he has you or that it was a game, you know, typically he will just slip right back to his default setting or whatever decision he made earlier. So I just wanted to get your feelings about no contact. How long would you recommend a woman do this no contact thing? And anything you'd like to say about that, I think would be really important. Okay, thank you uh, for reminding me. <laughs> so no contact is a rigid rule. It's very mechanical. It's uh, not very human-like at all, in my opinion. And it's where you want to take a certain amount of time. It's usually 30 days or more where you just have nothing to do with that person. Just absolutely nothing. Um, and I encourage some of that, which is where, you know, I don't want you looking at their social media because again, that puts your energy on the man. Mm -hmm. And I want, don't want you driving past his house because again, that puts your energy on him. And since the two of you are connected, you know, even if you dated for three months, six months, a year, 15 years, you have really what I call this internal love GPS where the two of you are connected. And so you can really feel what the other one feels. So this is why I want you to be really careful. And if you go no contact, it's very robotic. And a lot of times the man goes, oh my God, I messed up. I messed up. And, and you know, statistically it's been shown that men, I think it's something like 70 or 80% regret a breakup within 24 hours. 
But the problem is they've already made the decision to break up with you. And if they were to come back right now, they'd look like a total idiot. <laughs> right. Or, or if he breaks up with you, this just occurred to me. And then the woman jumps into convincing mode, trying to change his mind or convince him that the two of them are great together. It almost is like that thing where um, sometimes when you're in an argument or a debate, people just get more entrenched into what you know their original opinion so i could see that even if he regrets it if you start leaning forward and pushing your energy onto him he's gonna back up anyway right oh it's gonna mean disaster this is usually what leads to you getting blocked on social media um you know and i've worked with a a, a couple of clients who have had almost like pending legal things happening and it just really it gets you where you're like two magnets facing the other other way. And this is not love. This is not what's going to bring that man closer. So no contact is robotic, it's methodical. Um, I do encourage you to take at least a couple of weeks, you know, and you know, there's certain things that you need to do that you need to accomplish to reprogram and get your energy back to the right spot. Because otherwise, Let's say you get a manipulative program like I did uh, early on before I knew Elena, before I knew all this wonderful information I have now. And I very quickly got my guy back. And by that evening, we were at each other's throats again because I had learned nothing. All we were doing is repeating the same dysfunctional cycle again. So that's where this is different. There are a lot of really charming men out there on the internet, you know, selling programs that may help you with certain aspects, but ultimately this is a program that, you know, it goes deeper. What I do is I go deeper into you, into your wiring, into why the relationship failed in the first place. And that's what needs to get fixed. So during that no contact time period, which really isn't no contact, you work on yourself in certain ways. You have a little checklist. And once you really feel comfortable and good and your feminine energy again, uh, and, and some other things that are just much more in depth, I do have a point there where you can contact the man if he has not contacted you already. But I want to tell you, going back to this love GPS, when you start making these changes in your life and you're doing things like taking salsa dancing lessons or you know traveling out of state or going away with your girlfriends or going out on a date with a new man a strange thing has happened with all of my clients the man contacts them first he oh can yeah it. you know absolutely it. oh yeah same thing happens same thing happens when i work with women in this in really any situation not only does that man come back but they start you know men start coming out of the woodworks right a couple different exes will come back around you know men they dated that kind of faded away will jump back into the picture it's kind of interesting right um so that brings me to uh the next thing that just occurred to me my next question can i say one thing about them oh, yeah. jumping I know that that's a really common turn of phrase, but I remember at one point I, I, I literally had an ex come out from behind some bushes <gasps> to see me one time. Oh my God. I, I was out walking my dog and it wasn't the ex I was trying to get back, but it was a different one. And, you know, from when I was in college and he was, he just happened to be you know, in my neighborhood and saw me and wanted to say hello to me, but didn't want to creep me out. But that, <laughs> wow, it's start to happen with your energy. It's amazing how it begins to flow. Yeah. I, I just had a client, I think two days ago who said two of my exes just came back out of nowhere. And I was like, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you that is going to happen. <laughs> Once you start doing some of this work, pretty amazing. So you talked about this reprogramming that needs to happen. So what would you advise a woman to do when, um, when she is taking that two, three week period or so of no contact? How does she actually reprogram herself so that when the two of them get back together, if they do, or if she meets a, a different man who's even better for her, you know, so the, the same pattern doesn't repeat over and over. What would you advise her to do during that time where she's on her own? Well, there's so many things that happen during that time. I mean, this is the most important thing that can happen is, you know, we're often saying this work begins and ends with how you feel. So 
the work is internal. The work is about getting to the deep, deep you. And it's really about where has your energy been? Where has your focus been? So usually leading up to a breakup, I ask my clients, you know, how was the last, you know, three, four weeks? And they'll usually tell me things like, well, he was pulling back more. I was pushing on him more. And for example, a common thing that happens is all of your energy has been on the man. It's just been covering the man. And that's something you and I know very well is that when your energy is all over the man, he's going to feel suffocated and he's going to run. So, so much of this work is about what am I doing with my life? Like, who am I just as this powerful dynamite feminine woman? And reestablishing that, getting to know yourself again, and working through the grief. A lot of the illumination and the actual miracle you're seeking is in the grief of the breakup. And that's where the magic happens, truly. Wow. That is, see how powerful this is? I know everyone's going to be just loving this so much. Yeah, because this is really deep work that needs to happen if you don't want to keep repeating the same pattern. It's pretty easy to just get a guy back for a night or two. But like Adrienne said, she experienced, if you're just going to fall back into that same pattern, it's not going to give you those lasting permanent results that we know you're looking for. So what would you have a woman do with some of that grief or some of the feelings that start coming up? I know just from my own personal experience and working with so many just women from around the world, a lot of times our urge to lean forward and convince a man that we're great together and all of those things we do to push that, actually push the man away. It's like we're doing that because we want to cover up our feelings on a deep level. So once you stop doing all those things and just kind of sit with yourself for a little while, I know for sure that feelings will start to come up. So what would you advise a woman to do with some of those feelings of grief or sadness or anything that, that start to come up. I love everything you just said, Helena. It's so true. And this is a way that you can still do it your way, but only better. So you're, I'm not going to tell you to stuff down your feelings or don't cry or don't feel that way. You've been told that your whole life, most likely. Most women have, and that's why you're probably watching this video right now. So this is really about finding your true self in that grief. Now, the biggest thing I've learned in this process of helping so many women get their ex back, get their, get their husband back, get him back into their life, is that the grief is usually a, more about you than it is about the man. Now, that might sound like lip service or a psycho babble, but usually the one thing that that man is really giving to us whatever it may be, safety, security, love, intimacy, you have to kind of boil it all down and find out what it is that you're really craving to have from this person. And I always tell everyone, it's kind of like when you're on a diet and you really want a whole bar of chocolate, but instead you have like a chocolate yogurt <laughs> or you have, you know, a smaller piece of yogurt. It's not going to feel the same because you're a little bit love starved and you're in grief, but it will be a way to replicate what it is you're missing until you get to what I call the next tier. And this is when you up level, this is the illumination I'm speaking of. This is the miracle that you get in this process. Now, once you learn that, you can't unlearn it and you have it with you forever. So truly I can say heartbreak will be something that does not happen to you again levels of grief this deep with a man will be something that just don't happen for you anymore. You'll have something much more consistent, more stable. You'll be more grounded and confident in your feminine energy. I love that. Now, obviously there's so much that goes into that. I, you know, we you know for the programs we've done together as well, heartbreak to have uh, from heartbroken to happily ever after. There's so, so much that goes into it. And we always try to keep these videos on the shorter side if we can. I know we could tend to go on forever because there's just so much amazing information we always want to share with everyone. Uh, so I do want to just make sure I kind of cover everything here. So uh, when you did mention that sometimes if the man doesn't contact her all on his own, you would advise a woman to 
reach out at some point. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Because this is also where you're different from a lot of other um, experts out there who are just very rigid in their approach. And I just love this about your system. So can you talk a little bit about that? I think I've heard you call it kind of the Hail Mary. Oh, Elena, you're telling all my secrets here. But yes, it's called the Hail Mary Pass. And it's also in our program that we did together, which is Heartbroken to Heavily Af uh, Happily Ever After. And um, I, I give you a brief overview of how it works. And, you know, Hail Mary Pass is your absolute final last attempt. Now, I have had clients say, okay, I did the Hail Mary Pass. It didn't work. It's, it's been mm -hmm. two weeks. He hasn't contacted me. And I tell them, if you don't do this work that's in between these things, um, there, it probably won't work. Or if it does work, it will take just much longer to come around. And of course, I want you to have something more immediate and something more quick. For my guy, it took three months. It took three months of doing this. And then he showed up at my door uh, on a morning when I was, he was not in my head. You know, he wasn't the first thing I thought about when I woke up. I wasn't still deep in that grief. I woke up and I said, I'm going to paint all these canvases I've been waiting, wanting to paint. I'm going to listen to, you know, all these albums I want to listen to today. And I just run downstairs in my little night shirt and my doorbell rings and it's him at my door. And I'm like, you know, what are you doing here? And he was there to ask me to marry him. So that was the ultimate get, get him back right there. So I have so many more stories like this where these amazing, miraculous things have happened with women once you really invest your energy in yourself. And, and I teach you how to do that. So that's the really fun part of the Hail Mary pass is that sometimes when you make that final pass, you really reach out and give him that last little tap on the shoulder and you say, I'm still here, you know, and I still have feelings about you then that can trigger the man into action, but you do not want to do it too soon because you only get one. <laughs> right, right. You only get one. Yeah, what is maybe just a couple different examples? Of course, every situation is different. I'm sure in your program, you give you know the whole process, but if maybe just for everyone watching, give me an example or two of what a Hail Mary pass might look like in this situation. Well, it's, it's like I just said, you know, so there was a point with my guy where I told him, you know, you know, he had said, we should meet um, as friends and we should go out and have lunch together. And I let him know, I have always been your friend, but I don't want to be just friends. And I have feelings for you. You are my best playmate, you know, and I, and I still have deep feelings for you. And I'm starting to cry, <laughs> just mm. talk about it. But I was so vulnerable and I was just shaking when I said this to him. After that, I didn't hear from him for like four weeks. I thought, okay. And then the doorbell was rung. So that's an example. And you really have to craft it so it's truly your heart speaking. And not just like, well, here's what I want. Here's what I want to have happen. Here's the buttons I want to push. I'm not, a Hail Mary is not to stir something into creation. It's to say, this is what my heart is saying to you. And if they throw it out the window, um, which I have to be totally transparent, it can happen. Mm -hmm. But again, what I teach gives you the absolute best chances for turning that around. Amazing. So, so powerful. Your story is awesome. I love that. I just, it's just amazing to hear it because I knew you, you know, I was, we worked together, you know, every step of the way. So I love, love, love hearing about that. I was getting teary eyed when you said that too. So uh, when, let's say the man does come back on his own, a, a lot of women ask me like, how do I show him I'm different now? And that's kind of like, not quite the right approach, like in terms of showing him, like, I'm going to tell him all these things about why I'm different, you know, and I know men don't respond as much to our words as they do to our energy and our vibe. So do you have any tips for women where let's say the man does come back around on his own, which they often do, right? what would you say to a woman who, who asks like, how do I show him that I'm, that I'm different or that I've done work on myself or anything like that? Yeah. So I think that that is a really popular question about, I want to show him, you know, I've made all these changes and how do I let him know, you know? Um, 
And so the best way is through the slow burn, you know, through that trickle, through that drip and just very slowly letting him see who you are. So men are going to test women. It's a proven fact. Those tests are coming. And uh, if he comes back, you better believe he's going to say and do things to you that are going to just push your buttons and you're going to have to, you're going to have all the opportunity in the world to show him the new you. Trust me. <laughs> It'll happen. Um, I had one client not long ago. We, they had been rebuilding, rebuilding, and then they were going to meet for dinner. And all of a sudden he sends her a text like an hour and a half before and says, sorry, I can't do this. Um, you know, I, I've done some deep thinking and I'm so much happier on my own these months apart. I felt so much better, you know, all this stuff. And she was like, oh, I can't trust this man. And she wanted to just, you know, scrap the whole thing. And so with the program, you're able to, you know, craft that response that gives the man the absolute best chances to coming around. In her case, just in case you're curious, it was something along the lines of, you know, okay, you know, I, I trust you know what's best. I felt excited to see you. I felt so happy that we were getting together, but okay. And then sure enough, about 30 minutes later, he was like, screw it, let's get together. I wanna do this. So, I mean, men can change their minds in five minutes, five weeks, five seconds. You know, um, I know I certainly have changed my mind very quickly about things. Mm -hmm. And so men are no different. And we just, you just have to give him that cushion that I trust you and okay, I'm not here to play tug of war with you. And like you said, Helena, ignite that competitiveness with him because there's only one alpha and a man will let you win. He'll walk away and, and let you be the alpha. They'll do that. And especially when, you know, you stand everything to lose. So really this is a great way, a great opportunity to return to your feminine essence and just get that slow, soft, feminine energy to you instead of the urgency that most of us feel. I love that you talk about that slow burn. I've really found urgency is like the top problem I see for the most part in women, especially in this situation. This It can be easy to slip into that urgent place. So I love everything you said. And just wrapping up here, is there any like maybe your top two or three tips or anything we didn't cover for a woman in this situation? Obviously, I know there's a lot that goes into this and I love everything you shared, but if there, is there any kind of like last words you want to leave everyone with or anything like that? Well, the biggest thing is that most of you, if you're watching this video, it's because you're ready for a transformation and you're ready for a transformation, which means investing in yourself. It means taking yourself to a new level, tampering yourself in a new way. Sometimes we'll go out, we'll like buy shoes or we'll buy something else that's, you know, very quickly we have it. And then soon in a couple of years, it's in a landfill. And so the great thing about what Helena and I both do is that this is just knowledge that's never going to leave you. And once it's with you, it's always with you. So I encourage all of you, whether it's with Helena and I or any other coach or any other method, therapist or self-help books out there, anything you do, like invest in the intellectual side of this because your emotions, you know, can really just take you to all sorts of places. Um, but once you have the guidance, of your intellect and then you can connect with your heart the two can work in tandem and uh, everything should go a lot more smoother in the relationship sector and really everywhere in your life i believe how you do one thing is how you do everything so this has just been a great lesson for me personally in managing so many aspects of my life I love that. Yeah. I always say there is no going back in a lot of clients there. They don't trust themselves to not keep putting themselves in certain situations with men, whatever that situation is. And I always say, you just, you just know too much now. This will never happen to you again. You just, this knowledge is so, so life-changing and it is helpful throughout the course of your whole relationship, your whole lifetime. So Adrian, I know everyone's gonna be interested in the ABCs of getting him back. I will post a link to that in the description. I'll also post a link to Heartbroken, uh, from Heartbroken to Happily Ever After and some of the programs uh, Adrian and I did together. If you're interested in checking those out, we also have another one called uh, Find and Keep the One Without Coming Undone. If you're at that place where you really wanna 
attract the right man for you and get that lifelong committed relationship you've always wanted. Uh, Adrian, where can people, I'm sure you're going to get a million questions after this. Where, you, where can people get a hold of you and find you? And of course I'll post links to everything, but is there, I know you have a great YouTube channel and Facebook group. Is there anything like that you want to share? Well, yeah, I'm Law of Attraction, Love, and Dating on YouTube. Um, I'm also on Instagram. I have a lot of uh, great followers over there and a lot of conversations. And just, you know, Helena and I, we have programs together. You can find all of those at everheartcoaching.com slash courses. And then the ABC program is everheartcoaching.com slash ABC. Get him back. It's super easy to remember. Um, but thank you so much for having me, Helena. This has been so fun. I hope this video really helps a lot of women um, get in back, get a little bit closer to finding out what they need to do, uh, what they can do to give them the absolute best chances of re reconnecting with someone they love. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing all your just vast knowledge and information on this topic. Like I said, Adrian is the total expert at this much more than I am. This is not my area of expertise compared to some other things, but Adrian is like, you know, I refer clients to her all the time who were in this situation. So again, Adrian, thank you. And I hope to talk with you again soon. Bye Helena. Thanks for having me. Bye everybody.